Dr. So uh, is a urologic oncologist at Vancouver General Hospital uh, who treats primarily kidney, bladder, and prostate cancer and has a laboratory research program related to these urologic cancers. Today, Dr. So uh, is going to talk to us about what's on the horizon in the treatment of kidney cancer. So we've had a, a taste of how we treat it and, and deal with it. Uh, and now when we get the slides ready, uh, Dr. So is going to share with us about uh, what's, what's on the horizon, what's coming to us. Well, good afternoon, everybody. Yeah, so we got it all set up. I do have an embedded video, uh, cross, cross your fingers, I hope it works. Uh, so this, this afternoon, first I just want to thank Dev and KCC for inviting me to speak today. It really is a wonderful turnout. I'm actually surprised how many people are here. Um, but in any event, uh, in the next 20 minutes, I want to talk to you about some of the clinical trials that are available not only in our center but worldwide, where the next step I think the research is going, and then as well just a little snapshot of research at our own center here at UBC. So. Again, so the outline of the talk, I think Christian Kolmansberger really gave us a nice background as to what is the current standard of care. I want to go through some of the, the next level uh, drugs that are available and might be available to you in clinical trials. And then finally, a snapshot of research at UBC. Now, I was told not to put these kind of curves up, but I simply put this curve up purely to state that yes, this drug for clear cell carcinoma is a first line in patients with cancer that is spread outside of their kidney. So this study, that yellow line, just tells us that that drug is better than the blue line. And the only context I put that in there is that, to date, we still don't know whether or not taking out that kidney is beneficial. So, for instance, if you have a patient that goes to see Dr. Kohlmansberger and has a kidney cancer, but cancer elsewhere outside of the kidney, do they need to see me to have it removed? And again, I was told not to put blighted pictures. So instead, I removed those pictures, and uh, I have a picture of the OR. So this is a typical operating room. Um, there's no confidential information or anything gross. It's not as fancy as I think many, many say. There's no fancy music going on in the background. There are a couple of surgeons, a couple of medical students and residents. There's a, there are about two or three nurses and an anesthetist and uh, OR lights and a whole bunch of instruments. And I have to say that the, ca the cancer surgery has become less serious than it has in the past. And that's why I think medical oncologists are asking us to reconsider removing patients' kidneys because we can now remove them laparoscopically often and even in cases where the kidneys are quite large and aggressive looking, we can actually remove them with very um, minimal uh, effect on the patient. So, what do we know so far about surgery? Number one, they appear to be better. And this is again data that comes from the clinical trials in which that first slide I showed you, the yellow line was better than the blue line. In those patients, they all had kidney, or they all should have had a, a kidney removed, but when it was carried further and other patients started to use the drug, those patients in any kind of database, whether it was the initial drug database or a Canadian database, those patients that had the kidney removed did better. Even older studies, when we looked at immune therapy, a drug called interferon, which is not used very much anymore in Canada at least, it is used in the States with another drug called Avastin. But in Canada, these older studies showed that when we combined immunotherapy with the surgery, they did better and they live longer. But is this true with current drugs? And we don't know that. So there's two big trials going on. This is a French trial. So this is a trial looking at that drug, Sutent, without surgery or surgery and then Sutent. So this is ongoing. It's being enrolled in France. This is a trial that's opened up here in Vancouver. So we have this trial, and these are patients that are being randomized. So being blinded, we put them in a hat, their names are now, we pull out whether or not they're going to get surgery, and then the drug, or, or the drug, and then surgery. So again, a different type of a trial, but basically what we're trying to find out is whether or not the drug is beneficial uh, in, in patients who are having surgery. And again, hopefully in the next couple of years we'll have a better understanding as to whether or not kidneys should be removed. 
The bottom line right now, so as of today, we are removing a majority of the cancers if we're able to remove a majority of the cancer. Does that make sense? So if a patient has a majority of their cancer in their kidney, we will very likely remove it. So research question two, which drug is best? So, um, you know, I, uh, as, a, as a surgeon, I don't decide which drug is used. And uh, as many more of these drugs are being available, I think Dr. Coleman's burger is going to have a significant challenge as to which drug to use. So I think one of the biggest challenges is going to try to identify which is the best drug for the patient, as he mentioned. So are there patient factors? Are there molecular protein factors in the tumor? Or is there something, uh, a link between the side effects and the actual patient that we can lock to identify which path to go through? But again, this is a fancy slide. All this is telling us is that we now have a tremendous amount of research. So in about 20 years ago, we had no idea or understanding of why kidney cancers grew. We now know multiple different proteins. So you don't really need to know any of these names. All you need to know is that the drugs that we use are targeting various different parts of this pathway. And uh, this is the very same slide that Christian, I think, I think Dr. Coleman actually gave me this slide. The bottom line is that we have this plethora of drugs and with the help of Kidney Cancer Canada, a lot of these drugs now have been available for use in Canada and the challenge now will be which drug to use. And again, these drugs work very differently per se. They hit different parts of that pathway that I just showed you and it's now identifying which drugs to use when. So some of the new drugs that are coming out, and again, these are just fancy words, they're horrible words actually, Tavazinib and Exitinib. These are two drugs that appear to be similar to the other drugs, but are very different. So they're much more potent, so they're stronger, at least in the lab, and they're much more selective, meaning that they're targeting the part of that pathway that we want to target. Remember, the only reason why we target those pathways is that by shutting down that pathway, we hope to shut down that cell. So these two drugs um, are currently being studied. Now this is again a fan slide just to show you that in this study that is um, looking at patients with cancer that have spread out to randomized to receive the drug called tavosinib or another drug called serafinib, which was one of the first drugs that was available for patients with kidney cancer. And again, the results show that tovazinib is actually better than serafinib. We still don't know if it's better than serafinib. That first slide I showed you, is it actually better than the drug that we're using right now? We don't know. And will we use it in Canada yet? And um, hopefully we do. But the question will be, which patients should receive this drug versus the other drug? And I think one of the understandings of this drug is that maybe it has less side effects. So if you look at the amount of diarrhea and the other issues, it appears to be a little bit better tolerated than serafinib. But again, um, this is just one piece of the puzzle as to which drug to actually use. The other drug called exitinib, this was an earlier study, remember, fancy words here, all I wanted to tell you was that exitinib appears to be even better than the other drugs when we look at the earlier studies. But again, time will only tell, and this is again another study looking at this drug called exitinib versus serafinib to try to tell us, again, maybe if there is a better drug out there. Now some of the things that's still missing from these trials is the fact that we still don't know which drug a particular patient will do best with. So even though we can find out maybe better and better drugs for the general population to date, and this is what Dr. Coleman stated is that, and stressed is that we still don't know if this drug is actually better than another drug for this patient, for this patient, for this patient. And it's going to take a lot more time and understanding of the different mechanisms of why these cancers grow to then pick out which is the best drug. And it's going to take a few years. The other drugs. Now there's a whole bunch of this. I could spend the whole day talking about these other drugs. Remember that these are, these are names that are going to come up maybe when you see your physician, maybe when you do research. And again, this is just for interest sake. These are not available to us yet, except for in clinical trials. There's this drug, again, a horrible word, devotinib. This targets not only those pathways that we described, 
but potentially other pathways in which these kidney cancers can use to grow. There are a whole bunch of other drugs. They they're, again all have fancy names, Brevanib, Afibercept, Baby 1120, and again these are all drugs that are being studied right now worldwide and many of these are available in clinical trial um, in patients at, in, in Vancouver and in British Columbia. So again, I can't stress enough that what Dr. Coldenberger stated is that if there's any opportunity that you are available to go into clinical trial, I would hope that you would think about it. It's, it is definitely not a selfish thing for us. I know some patients believe that we're just trying to do it to get them in a clinical trial. We're not. We're really there to help patients expand not only for their own choice, but for the next generation of patients so that we understand which is the best drug for them. And again, some more drugs, all these fancy words. And I think all of these slides are just telling you is that even though I don't even understand a lot of these mechanisms, and I think many of us don't know why some of these drugs work in kidney cancer, the bottom line is, is that we didn't have these studies even 10 years ago. And 10 years ago, we had one treatment and that was interferon, and it was a very poor treatment. We now have moved to a point at which we have all these fancy names to test and different, different parts of uh, patients in terms of their pathway, whether it's the first agent, the second agent, or third agent, to help us determine which is the best agent. So finally, and I think this is the most important uh, question that we, we need to answer, is how do we overcome treatment resistance? Now, this is the resistance of bacteria. And I think if we think of resistance of bacteria to antibiotics, we, have, we can think of it the same way as in kidney cancer. So bear with me. When patients receive an antibiotic for bacteria, it works for a while. If they're on it for too long, maybe, these bacteria can either communicate with each other to then develop ways to beat the antibiotic. It can develop its own mechanisms by forming its own bad proteins to beat the bacteria, the antibiotic. Or it can also have its own inherent ability to be resistant, meaning that there are some cells in the bacteria, there are, if you look at a million bacteria, there's two or three that already the, that antibiotic is not working, and are working against and it's those two or three cells that are able to grow and grow and grow. And with the time, you develop this resistance. In the same way, cancers have the same ability to outsmart physicians. It has the same ability to then think and communicate with each other. It has the same ability to have its own inherent resistance. So like a bacteria becomes resistant to antibiotics, unfortunately, many times it's kidney cancers, and all cancers, can become resistant to chemotherapy and also these targeted therapies. So like Sisyphus with this huge boulder and you know, even though he uh, benefited mankind by giving us fire as well, these drugs um, uh, have given us that initial ability to treat patients, however, this burden of resistance is still amongst all of us and hopefully one day we'll be able to lift this burden off our shoulders and develop a treatment. And again, this is just a fancy slide to show that one of the mechanisms that Dr. Kohlmansberger talked about is, again, not just to block one part of the cascade of pathways, but to develop, to block multiple parts. Whether it's multiple different lines, or whether or not it's just looking at one line and hitting many different parts of that line. To date, we still don't have very good treatments, and as Dr. Colton-Berger said, we still don't have very good combinations of drugs that we have that are going to be useful in patients. There are other drugs that we are using to look at that are being used after those first and second line treatments aren't working, and again, these are just a reiteration of the other drugs that I mentioned before. These are the results of small studies which are now being carried forward into larger studies. So cabozatinib, 386, and this other bristol script drug called uh, 936558, which is something called an immune checkpoint inhibitor. Fancy word. All I can say is that 
these drugs have the ability to kill cancers in the lab, and in er we have early activity in these early clinical trials, and now it's time to really find out whether or not they work or not. So at UBC, we have, a, I think, a, a nice kidney cancer research program. And again, what we're trying to understand is why kidney cancers do not respond to treatment. And eventually, our goal, obviously, is to try to identify new treatments to give patients something when they fail those first treatments. So when they fail sutent, we want to trigger, figure out other drugs that are available. So this is our research lab. This is on oak and laurel, between uh, oak and laurel. And as you can see, we're on the third floor there. It's a brand new building quite fancy, so we have really all of the requirements to do this. This is called the Prostate Center, but again, there's a lot of bladder cancer and kidney cancer research going on. And again, what we're trying to figure out is whether or not we can find mechanisms of this so-called resistance and to then outsmart those cancer cells that are outsmarting us. So the goal really is to think outside the box. We want to look for new drugs not just those drugs that we have. And again, the only way we can look for new drugs is to then understand at the bench level. So at, in the lab with test tubes, etc., we're trying to find out which are some bad proteins. And again, this is just one study in which we showed that there are multiple different bad proteins that are growing in kidney cancers. And it, again, we can target these. So these are kidney cancer cells. And one of the bad proteins that we think is called ILK. And you can see it's very highly expressed. That green is the protein there. And we can see that if we target it with a drug, we can collapse that whole cell. So this is a kidney cancer cell. And we can target it. And once you treat it to target this bad protein, the whole thing disintegrates. So again, this is just one example of many in which are in the starting point to then develop future treatments. So hopefully our goal is to get and expand this list further and further and further to then identify more and more treatments for patients. So in conclusion, I'm very happy to report that there are multiple new agents that are currently available in development. Many of these are available here in Vancouver. Dr. Coleman'sberger is leading many of these clinical trials, not only locally, but nationally and internationally. There is resistance, however, and it's this resistance that we are trying to understand. We need to find out why these cancer cells are developing resistance and then ultimately find new drugs to treat this. And again, hope hopefully we can all fight the resistance. Thanks.